So the Browns are heading up to Mile High, uh, getting ready to face the Broncos in a few hours. Tony Grossi, longtime uh, Browns beat reporter, what he thinks the Browns need to do. They better be able to run the ball because of, because of this pass rush that Denver imposes and, and, and a very strong secondary. So it's going to be very difficult uh, if the score gets lopsided early for, for Winston to perform like he did against Pittsburgh. Uh, again, I, th th that sloppy footing, there's no doubt, helped his cause yeah. against Pittsburgh. This defense is, is pretty good, as we mentioned, for Denver. It's carried them most of the year, and um, they're hungry. I mean, they feel this game and their next game against Indianapolis, and they got it wrapped up. So uh, I, I think uh, running the ball is going to be important. So, Jeff, what do, you, what do you need to see from the Browns tonight and moving forward to, to feel a little bit better about what's going to be at this Anyway, kind of, this would be a disappointing season. What do you want to see the last six games starting tonight? Well, I mean, the, there is the interesting point of that, you know, and certainly about the Browns running the ball. Look, hey, you're trying to take it easier on your defense. Look, your offensive line, which hasn't been great this year, offensive line tendencies are usually better in run blocking than they are in pass blocking. It's just the way it goes. But you look at Nick, and you know Nick's not all the way there. Um, it's, you know, and it's he's certainly understandable, a gruesome injury that he came back from. So yeah, you'd like to run the ball, but the same thing though, if, if I'm getting two and a half yards of carry, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? I would rather take more opportunities for five to seven to eight yard plays by throwing the football. What am I looking for here? Well, one of the ones you talked about before we went to segment two, Juwan Briggs is up. I want to start looking at some guys here. Like, you know, do these guys have futures? You know, I love the two moves they made late last week. Uh, you know, bringing in James Houston had eight sacks as a rookie in 2022 for the Detroit Lions. Uh, Cam Thomas that year was out of San Diego State, was originally drafted by the Cardinals, traded to the Chiefs, obviously released now at Cleveland Brown. These are 24-year-old pass rushers. Um, certainly, you know, guys I want to see, you know, because, look, there's opening for fourth and fifth edge rusher on the Cleveland Browns next year. So you want to see, can you maybe get cheap and, and get a guy in here who can help you? Um, you know, offensively, you want to see the continued progression of the wide receivers. You know, you want to see Cedric Tillman. Hopefully this is the last game he'll be out. You know, you really want to see, is Jerry Judy going to be somebody you can consider as a one, or are you going to consider as a high end two? You know, when I say one, I mean like top 32 in the NFL. I know so many people, when you say number one wide receiver, they think top, oh, he's not Justin Jefferson. Oh no, not everybody is. But you, you, that's kind of where you're looking at. You know, I think on the offensive line, sadly, we're not going to get to see Dewan Jones at left tackle anymore. You know, I don't know how you're going to get playing time for Zach Zenter with Wyatt Teller and with Joel Batonio. But there are some spots on the D-line where can we see some young guys play. Maybe you get an opportunity to play Miles Harden. I know he's going to be out tonight, but do you get some reps for him? He was a day three pick for him last year. A lot of people are excited about. Could be a future nickel for this team if somehow, some way things don't work out long term with Greg Newsom. But, you know, but and the other thing is, is just go out there and play hard every week. You know, so many times in tanking and look, I get it. You know, I cover the draft a ton. I know all of that. And you're trying to get the pick this, that and the other thing. But, you know, if you're just going out there and going through the motions, you know, it's not good for anybody. It's not good for your fan base. You look at like a game yesterday, like the Carolina Panthers. They went out there. Bryce Young, all of a sudden now starting to look like a guy that maybe Carolina can have a lot of faith in. Played 60 minutes. Devastating fumble from the running back. They end up losing the game. So Carolina, guess what? Saves their draft position, showed really well, and which is, you know, so they got the best of both worlds. You know, going out there, getting your butts beat in 31 to 6 because you're worried about your draft position. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're a stock, if you consider your franchise like a stock, the stock is just absolutely plummeting. You know, so you, you want to find a way to, you know, hopefully have a nice scenario of everything. And, again, if the Browns win some games and it means they might have to draft 11 or 12, I'll take it as opposed to being embarrassed every week. And guess what? When you start go looking around for free agents and they said, man, your team just absolutely tanked and just dropped, you know, the last half of the season, you know, that's going to, you know, because everybody thinks about the draft position. Nobody thinks about what your product looks like to prospective free agents as well. You know, you want to do everything you can to put your franchise basically in the best light.